Hi guys, welcome back to the garden. How are you? I hope you are all doing well. It has been a minute. Let's see, it is the first week in August, right? And it's been a minute since I've actually showed you as a garden to see what's happening and what's not happening. I came out here because I'm working on a, um, getting some new beds built to plant some dapple willows. And I looked at the day and I'm like, this day is too beautiful not to share it with you, right? How can I not share a beautiful day like this? We are sitting at 70, believe it or not people, 78 degrees. It is feeling good. All right, you are looking at our Althea. Oh, Rose of Sharon. Isn't she beautiful? There are so many bees in there, so many. I got stung by one, can you imagine? Oh man, I got stung by a bee, people. I was deadheading this beautiful knockout rose right here. This one, right? And now normally when I deadhead, when I do anything with my roses, I always wear my gloves because I'm just so um, I'm nervous about the thorns. And let me tell you, that day I came out, I did not have my gloves on. No, I did not. And I decided that I wanted to do it like, you know, I'd see other YouTubers and professional rose growers. Um, they'll be working with their roses without gloves on. Can I tell you? I saw someone handling Tess of the Herb Reveals without gloves on. And, and I'll show you Tess. Tess is very thorny. So I, I was feeling like a super gardener, right? Came up here and started deadheading without my gloves. And I went for one of the uh, spent blooms. And let me tell you, a bee was in there and it stung me. Woo! And it was hot. It was hot like a fire. Oh my goodness. I've never felt anything like it. So never again, all right? Whenever I'm working with my roses, I will. I definitely will wear some gloves. All right, I wanted to take some time to show you what's performing in my garden right now, the first week in August. We've come off a very hot month, right? Very hot. All of my roses, they basically took their semi-dormancy rest their break in the summer. Um, they're now starting to rebloom again, right? Which is awesome. But then I do have some summer beauties that have taken over. And you're looking at the second one here, which is our little Kim, the Rose of Sharon's. I said, when the roses are all done, the Rose of Sharon's come out and they smile at you, right? They keep the energy going in the garden. But outside of the Rose of Sharon, there is something else, something else that I just love, that I've spoken to you guys about so many times that I'd like to show you. Now, this is not her, this is not her. This, if you remember, we did a video, uh, when was it? Maybe three weeks on to maybe a month ago for some of uh, the roses that I picked up from Home Depot. This is the Shirley's Bouquet. And look at Shirley, look at this rose. Do you see that little, um, pinkish sort of a hue on the in center isn't that beautiful oh man so they're still in the containers I don't know if you remember when they came in they were covered in black spot just not looking good but I just could not leave these roses because I just I just knew these guys had some potential and let me tell you they are not going to disappoint me look at them look at them so we are actually going to try to get these planted Loving them, loving them. Oh, come here, come. Let me show you these over here. Look at, look at this. How can you not be in love with roses? Look at this. Oh, isn't she beautiful? Isn't she absolutely beautiful? Not in the ground yet, and flowering like crazy. I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. Love and love, love it. That is gorgeous. Now that is why I love roses and I love I love gardening. I love plants, right? I, I just love them. Just love them. All right. So let me step out here. Lots of bees around. So now that I've been stung by one, you know, I'm just so nervous about them now. So I, I've tried to be very, very cautious. All right. Showing you my knockout roses. Listen. These knockouts never disappoint. They have not disappointed me to date. I've had them in the garden now for about three years and they have always, always, always kept me smiling with these beautiful, beautiful red roses. Look at these. Look, 
Isn't that just gorgeous? Absolutely beautiful. When all of our David Austin roses, they're taking a break now, I know. They're not paying us any mind. But these knockouts never, never stop. It's one right there. Okay. Little Kims are so cute, right? And there's the other hair. And as you can see, putting on that new growth, new buds. And more flowers. Absolutely beautiful. All right, let me take you down to the gem, the diamond, the love of my garden at this time of the year. Right? You are looking at her right now. Who is that, people? Yes. This is the black diamond crepe myrtles that I keep showing you in almost every video, right? Look at these beauties. Look at them. Isn't she gorgeous? Look at this. Now, this one has just started, just started flooring for us, right? I don't know why this bed started so late, but that's okay. I'm going to show you the second bed. There goes Mr. Bunny. I'm going to show you the second bed here so that you can see how absolutely gorgeous these black diamond crepe myrtles look. I need to just do a total video for these because I, I just love them. Now, I have them planted. There are two, four, six in this bed. All right. And right now, well, two are babies. So basically, we're seeing, you're seeing the impact of two right here up front. There are two in the back. And remember, we added two little babies at the side. So can you imagine next season when our babies grow up a bit and everybody's a bit more mature and then we flower? How absolutely gorgeous is this going to be? Look, absolutely gorgeous. Now, I did get one thing wrong, right? What I got wrong is in the center, I had the Tranquility Standard. That rose that you're seeing with absolutely nothing going on behind it right now because she totally went to sleep on me, right? That is tranquility. And what I had wanted, I wanted this beautiful display of the black diamond crepe myrtle um, intermingled with the white blossoms of tranquility. But tranquility is at rest at this time of the season. So she would not work to accomplish that look, right? Ah, all right. Which means I will have to find a substitute for her or... I could leave her in and just let the black diamonds dominate the space during this time. Either way, I'm loving it. If I did switch her, it would be for something like a, um, it would have to be a hydrangea that flows around the same time of the year so that we could have that red, white on black, which is just going to be so cute. All right, this is the second bed of black diamonds. This one is a little thinner because we had some damage on the one to the, what's this, this is my right. Okay, but she is, um, everybody here is open. Everybody has a flower. Right? And doesn't she look absolutely gorgeous? Look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, let me take you close. Why do I have you so far, right? You're like, Naomi, take me in. Let me take you in. Like, look. How crisp and how beautiful the red is. Oh man. I absolutely love this plant. Love it, love it, love it. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Look at the wave. Look at the wave. They're always saying hello to you. All right. All right. Now, do remember that. Earlier this season, my black diamonds had died back, right? So the, the growth that you're seeing now, it is the first week of August. These guys actually put on all that growth from mid-May till now. All right, so once they started growing, they just kept pushing up that growth, okay? And now they have flowered. And even without flowering, they are still the most awesome thing in the garden. Because for me, every color... Any rose that I put beside it, any color that stands beside it, is just going to be highlighted and just ac accentuated and just, uh, just made absolutely gorgeous. Let me show you an example here. Give me just a second. Let's see if I have anything blooming in the garden. Huh. I just I don't have any roses. Oh, man. 
All right, let's see if we can find anything that's blooming because I, I do want to just show you how absolutely gorgeous this plant is. All right, so let me get the camera set up here for a second. I just ran inside to get my uh, pruners, right? Because I'm, I'm going to try to snip what I have blooming so that I can take it beside that black diamond and show you how just how absolutely gorgeous that plant is, right? And I stepped outside and I'm like, hmm, somebody's cooking up a storm. Because I'm smelling onions, you know, when someone's sauteing onions and you got that nice saute, that nice fragrance set uh, going on. That's what I'm smelling when I step outside. And guess what, guys? I realized nobody's cooking. No. That smell is coming from the rose walk where the alliums are. Can you believe it? I cannot believe it. Coming from the alliums, right? Huh? All right. So back on track here. All right. So I went and I snipped everything that I, well, a few blooms that I could find around the garden. I don't have many going on right now. Outside of the black diamond crepe myrtles, the hydrangeas, and of course my knockouts. My knockouts are doing their thing. But my knockouts are, what's that, my knockouts are red. And so um, you can already see the red contrast against those leaves. But look at this, all right? Let's get on in close. I must remember not to grab the rose. I grabbed just one of the faded bloom from our Rosa Sharon Althea. And look at her. Let me see if you're seeing what I'm seeing. All of this <laughs> because I'm just trying to show you how absolutely gorgeous this black diamond crit myrtle is. But look at this. Look at this contrast. Look at that contrast. Right? Look at that. That purple just plays any color that it is paired with is going to be amplified it's just awesome right okay look at let's look at let's see who else i have here oh i actually pulled off a bloom from or shirley's bouquet look at that white again against oh man look at that Look at that, people. This is the look that I was going for, having planted the black diamonds surrounding tranquility, the tranquility standard in the middle. But I did get it wrong because tranquility does not bloom at this time of the year, right? So I would not get this contrast. I have to see if I can find a rose on a standard that's going to be blooming for me when the black diamonds are doing their thing so that you can enjoy moments like this. Can you imagine? Look at this, people. Isn't it just gorgeous? Yes. Oh my gosh, look. Look at her just paired with those leaves. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, okay, you're gonna say, okay, Naomi, white goes with everything, right? Okay, hold on. Hold on. This is a teeny little bloom from our Queen of Sweden, a little baby baby. Look at Queen of Sweden again. Look at the contrast. Any color that goes beside the black diamond crepe myrtle, any color, just looks really good. Really, really good. Right? I do have, let me see. Hmm. Ooh, I know a color that's a standout here. I think I've got one. What's her name? Lady of Charlotte. Let's get a blue from her. So here is Lady of Shalott, just did a little snip in from her, isn't she gorgeous? Lady of Shalott is actually resting now too, a true rest. She only has like three blooms on her, right? And then look at her again against this black diamond crepe myrtle. You cannot go wrong with this plant, guys. This is, an, I, I just love it. I absolutely love this plant. Look, let me pop her on in there and move my hands out of the way. Don't fall, mommy. Look, look at how beautiful, and I'm telling you, they do this to any color, any rose that is paired with these black diamonds, they, it just pops, it is gorgeous, 
And so um, I need to figure out, find a beautiful standard that I can place in the middle that's going to be flooring at the time that the black diamonds are flooring because I would just love to have this contrast going on. Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So that is it. I promise. No more harping on these black diamond crepe myrtles, but I love these plants, people. Love it. Carefree. Um, as promised, it gave me my three or four feet of growth from the ground up, right? Um, disease resistance. Nothing has troubled this plant. Uh, it is just absolutely gorgeous. Even without flowering, it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love, love, love the foliage. Love it. All right. It actually added to more areas of the garden still because I just love it that much. All right. <laughs> So that's that. That's it. I promise. I promise. I'm going to say nothing else about this plant other than it is just absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Man, and I'm still going to work. Uh, see if I can find a way to get that white in the center because I just love the way the white pairs with the black diamonds. Just look at it. I'm using, I'm using, um, I don't want to get stuck. This is Shirley's bouquet. She is very thorny. She's a very thorny little lady. Do not fall, Mama. She is very, very thorny. Ooh, I am smelling those alliums, man. Hey, right, look. Look, 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 look. Isn't that just gorgeous? Isn't that just gorgeous? I just love this plant. Love this plant. All right, so you know, before I go on any further, just repeating myself of how, how much I just love these black diamond crepe myrtles, right? I mean, I love them. I love them. I really do. It's all about the foliage. I love it. I love how all the colors that you pair with it just contrast and are just amplified. And I just love it. Even the green. Look at the green from the leaves. Just absolutely gorgeous, right? Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. All right, and so on to one more of our summer bloomers here, the Holy Grail Hibiscus from Proven Winners. I've got this little lady growing here in a container. It's her second year in this container, and she's obviously telling me that, hey, Naomi, mm -mm, this is my last year in here. Move me out. All right, so at the end of the season, I'm definitely going to put her in the ground. But she is absolutely beautiful. Treated us to some blooms here. She actually just started giving us flowers maybe a week ago yeah one week now and she's yeah doing her thing can't complain love it all right all right now let me show you something a beautiful people something a beautiful 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 look at this little lady look 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 this is the little hottie high changes i believe it's a proven what is it no 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 no. i cannot do that it's a southern living plant i think i have to double check but let me tell you these hydrangeas are so awesome they are so sturdy they are so uh, trouble free right I, I i i'm growing currently i'm new to i'm new to hydrangeas okay this is my these that you're seeing right here these are just planted last fall so these are babies okay I can only imagine them getting better from here every season to come but new to the whole thing of hydrangeas just added them to the garden last year so I have the bobos as you know and I've got the limelight hydrangeas as well as these little hotties and I am telling you I am telling you that I would swap I would swap my limelight I would swap my bobos I can't let my bobos hair it though. That's not nice. I would swap my bobos. Yes, I would. For these little haughty hydrangeas. What? They are so sturdy. I wish you could feel their panicles. It is so thick. Right? Look at that. No space in between. And remember, this plant is a baby. Absolutely sturdy. Absolutely gorgeous. And the other thing that sells me on these hydrangeas that I love so much. Do you see their green tips? That little green on top of the panicle. I think that is so, so beautiful. This is why I picked it up. Um, look at the look at those little pollinators coming out of there. So again, these hydrangeas, little hotties, love them. Love them, love them, love them. Okay? I would swap my 
Who is that? The bobos. I love my bobos, but I would swap my bobos out for these little hotties. Love them. Love my limelights, but I love the little hotties. They are so sturdy. Oh, and so beautiful. And I just love that they keep that little bit of green. And they have not started that whole thing of changing colors yet. I'll show you the, um, I'll show you here the bobos and the limelight hydrangeas so that you can see, get a better idea of um, what I'm trying to explain. All right, we're in my messy rose walk here, guys. Do not, do not, do not look at the mess. Do not look at the weeds. I ran out of energy. I ran out of steam mid-season, all right? So we're trying to, we're trying to get things back here. But look at these beautiful, do you see these beautiful new white panicles from this bobo hydrangea? Listen, I posted a video a little late about uh, transplanting these bobos, moving them from containers, putting them in the ground. And I was so worried because I had totally cut their root ball in half, basically, right? Totally thin that root ball out. But look at what these bobos are doing. Do you see all that beautiful, <laughs> all that new, beautiful white? Yes, they are settling into the space. And this is two weeks, two weeks after having done that. Huh. Who said you couldn't move um, plants in the middle of summer, right? Look at them. Absolutely gorgeous. Yep. So next season, they are going to be fuller. They're going to be happy. And we're going to have a beautiful run of bobos on this bed, in this bed. <laughs> All right. But well, let me show you the bobos. So remember what we were looking at in terms of the little hottie hydrangeas, right? Now, these are my bobos for me. Somehow, my bobos are burning, right? They get the same amount of water. They're actually um, not in as deep a sun area, to be honest with you. So turn. You'll see that right now. The little hardy hydrangeas are sitting in the sun. The bobos have now gotten a break and they're in a little bit of shade. All right. But look at the difference in their panicles. It is not as sturdy. It's not firm. You know, I touch it and my fingers go all the way in and I'm able to do this right there's nothing there to squeeze i'm being careful now because that's how a bee stung me the other day when i grabbed just grabbed a petal so i'm being a little bit more uh, um taking a bit more caution when i do it but look see how soft and airy the bubbles are and then look at what they're what they've done they're burning look at this leaf for example look at this flower right already turning into their getting into their green color right so I'm going to be losing the white here soon. So this is how, remember, same environment, same weather conditions. And this is how my bobos has, have held up. And this is how my little haughty hydrangeas have held up. Again, ooh, now see, there's, oh, it's a fly. Have, have held up too. The same conditions. Look, I cannot push my fingers in it, right? You saw me... Um, rubbing the bobo flowers and I was just getting on in there it was just so thin this is so sturdy all right let me show you let me show you the uh, limelight hydrangeas Munstead wood always like I said Munstead wood never disappoints always keeps you smiling all right do you see how deep the color looks right now it needs to be deadheaded but gorgeous all right let's go over to the limelight and so this is what the hydrangeas look like now uh, it was the first week in August after, like I said, severe weather. I think we had three days of not so happy weather. We had hail, we had lots of wind. Uh, they are holding up, changing colors, still looking good in the landscape, right? Still feeling the love from these hydrangeas. Okay, let's take a look at the final section here of the garden. All right. So this is where we have our knockout roses again. As I mentioned earlier, I cannot, will not take the knockouts out of my garden because they're always giving you some love. They always got some energy going on for you and you got to appreciate it, right? Let me take you on in closer just a second. I'm going to go handheld for a second to show you this section. So forgive me if the video on this side is going to be a little bit wobbly. Look at this. Do you see that emerald green in the back behind this knockout here at the front? This emerald green just took off this year in terms of height. I feel like it added like two feet of growth overnight. It's like they just sat there and doing nothing and then all of a sudden, look, whoo, they all the way up there. I'm telling you. All right, so 
back to the knockouts. Knockouts are doing well. Let me come on in. Getting ready for their third flush. Right. Look at all of those buds. And the new leaves. Right. I love these roses. I really love these roses. I love it sometimes that they take on this really nice deep velvety red. I don't think the camera, yeah, my camera does not do this knockout justice. Awesome velvety red that is just so soothing. The color red really warms me. I love that color. All right. And then we have in the middle, we have our Claire Austins. Our little babies are still growing. All right. Look at her. She's treating us to some blooms. Yeah, she knew we were going to come on out today. Look at this. This is Claire Austin. And I must admit, she's been a bit slow to go, but she is constantly giving me some growth, right? So I am patiently waiting for next season. See, there is another flower here. Let's see if I can have you see it. Beautiful. Claire Austin, absolutely beautiful. This space is going to look so nice when everything goes in, right? And the poet's wife, let's see. This is our little poet's wife that was planted bare root this season. Okay. okay, I pulled back so that you could get a full view of what the area looks like. Let me see if I can get this kind of catch, capture all of the roses in there. Okay, there we go. So you have the two knockouts on either side, and then that middle emerald green arborvitae, you've got two Claire Austins on either side of the emerald green, and in the very center right here is our poet's wife, right? This is where patience comes in, right? I, I, I'm literally waiting. I'm so anxious to see how the area is going to look once the Claire Austins are more mature and the um, poet's wife you know, when everything's all grown in. So hopefully by next season, I'll be able to say, wow, I like it. But as it is right now, I still like it. Yeah, just giving it some time to do what it wants to do. Okay, all right, let's, all right, let's end with the gem of the garden right now, the jewel of my garden and the first of August, first week of August is, look, look at, look at them. Look at the jewel. Yep, the gems of my garden at this time of the season, guys. Definitely the black diamond crepe myrtles. Look at these babies. They are absolutely gorgeous. I enjoy the energy of them. I enjoy the foliage. I enjoy the flowers. Just look at the energy that it brings to the garden now when all of my roses are basically resting. The black diamonds just stand on in and keep the garden going. Love it. Absolutely. All right, guys, so what better way to end it than on these stars today, right? Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at the little tranquility there in the center, all fast asleep. Ay, ay, ay. All right. All right, so I'll go ahead and end the video here. <laughs> As always, thank you guys so much for joining me for yet another beautiful day in the garden. I hope you guys have an absolutely awesome day. Enjoy the rest of your week and I will see you in the next video. Oh, look at that. She's giving you the wave. Look at that. Oh, okay. Let me just pause so you can enjoy for a second. I wish you could feel the wind. It's just so beautiful. absolutely gorgeous. All right, guys. Thanks again for joining me in the garden. You are all awesome. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.